Yes, it's 10.01. It's what? 10.01. Okay. <laughs> right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome to those of you who are joining. Oh, perfect in person here at the church and welcome to those of you who are joining via our live stream welcome to those of you who come to the church many 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 sundays and welcome to those of you who are visiting or joining online maybe the first time uh, we have some guests marvin and bet mcclay hello sitting with lena there welcome welcome so welcome we are celebrating the third sunday of easter together and um, I sort of chose from the, from the scripture that we're going to read of Luke, embodied spirituality, and how Jesus appears fully enfleshed and in the body is what I'll be reflecting on, and lots of hymns that share that sense of our five senses and embodied um, life. So a quick reminder uh, that we are no longer passing the offering plate, but it's available as you enter. And also, um, you can catch it after if you missed it. But a good way to offer your contribution is through an e-transfer to office at nelsonunitedchurch.ca. So thank you to everyone for your contributions for our church life. And let's jump into announcements and start with birthdays and other celebrations. <laughs> So Judy, who's not here with us, um, she's in Victoria, but she lets us know that Barbara Fulton's birthday is on Tuesday, and Nancy Jones is celebrating a birthday on Wednesday. Do we have other birthdays? It is my niece's, Angus's cousin, Sadie, is celebrating her seventh birthday today, which is very exciting. Seventh birthdays are generally very exciting. Well, I guess another celebration to mention, it's not quite the same as a birthday, but we celebrate um, next week is the AGM. So there's going to be a finger food potluck and the annual general meeting after the service on Sunday next week. And Trash to Treasures is also coming up. <laughs> other, other important announcements <laughs> that you don't want to forget about. So... <laughs> Other big celebrations. Um, on, the, on the note of the annual general meeting, we do have some um, reports printed out, but if you're able to, if computers work well for you, it's available online, but we do have some limited copies, so you could have a glance here um, and pass it on to somebody who needs a, a printed copy. And, and if, the, if we somehow run out, uh, you can get in touch with me in the office and I can print one out for you as well. Uh, do you have announcements, Nicole? Further? I do. Mm -hmm. the, the Spirit Explorers Youth Group that is for young folks between 7 and 12 uh, is meeting this Friday at 3.30 here. And uh, that is open to everybody. So if you've been wanting to encourage someone you know, you can reach out to me or they could just come. We'll be watching for them. I have another quick announcement. Camp Spirit, the, the day camp, it's a roaming day camp that came last summer. It moves about the province with a youth crew from the Lower Mainland. They'll be here uh, July 22nd to 26th. So that is a camp that's open to all young people, 6 through 15, 16. They're here throughout the day, food is included. Uh, a few years ago, I invited you all to help support that camp. And it's that time again where if you had a, a donation, a, any amount that you could leave with Robin in the office or Mark as a donation to Camp Spirit, we are going to make a contribution from our community to help support that camp to cover their um, expenses for bursaries for campers across the province as well as for food and accommodations for the staff. So 
donations for camp spirit uh, could be made over the next few weeks. I think I'll, I'll announce it for a few weeks and we'll see what we can collect. Thanks, Katie. And I forgot to mention, we've got our April Wild Church will be happening. There'll be chance, okay. Okay, and there'll be <laughs> chance for um, Wild Church on Wednesday at 2 p.m. and we're gonna do it in gyro again uh, this week. So Wild Church, our revolutionary love continues tomorrow at two. And for those of you who maybe joined us at the start and then stepped back, it is designed that um, you can join. If you've been missing, um, don't worry, you can jump back right in. And I think that's, oh, I do want to mention, it's in your announcement sheets, but there's lots ongoing about building updates. Some are um, building updates we've already seen, wonderful, beautiful painting of the, in the, Fairview Room, things are getting freshed up, but there's bigger things in the work that um, Bob has been working on, getting all the, the quotes and so on, as far as um, refreshing our steeple, and we're gonna have the work on the back stairs there happening, so just something to be aware of. Well, more than to be aware of, you're going to be asked for ways to contribute to that, because <laughs> it's gonna be a big, a big thing, but it's just sort of, just in the initial stages, starting that up. Wonderful, okay. I think we're now going to have a prelude where we, we can sure sort are. of yeah. listen to some music oh, yes, and get... And I had one more announcement. Just um, oh. Chancel Choir will start up again this Thursday at 6 o'clock. And we'll start working on... Um, David has, is going to, f to make us a little list of pieces he would like us to do before, before his retirement. So if you want to join us doing that, we're going to start again on Thursday. Right. And now the prelude. The earth is continuing to awaken after winter's sleep. Awaken, awaken us to your glory, glory, O God. God. Leaves emerge from winter's shelter and stretch out to face the sun. Awaken, awaken us, us to your, your light, light, O God. God. Birds that hid from frost and snow now sing out from the treetops. Awaken, awaken us to your, your presence, O God. God. That which seemed dead has now been born anew. Awaken us to your life, O oh God. And then we light the Christ candle, a sign of all that awakening. And now we'll sing together um, more voices number 171. Christ has no body now but yours. That's 171 in the coil bound more voices. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours. No! 
touch but yours to bind the broken hope of the people of God. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours. Here on this earth, yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion. No eyes but yours to see as Christ would see, to find the lost, to gaze with compassion. No eyes but yours to glimpse the holy joy. has no body now but yours, no hands but yours, here on this earth, yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion, no feet but yours to journey with the poor, to Walk the world with mercy and justice. Yours are the steps to build a lasting peace for the children of God. Christ has no body now but yours, no hand but yours. Here on this earth, creation in this this glorious time of renewal and new life. May May we feel the sun on our faces. May we we hear spring bird song. May May we smell the sweet sap of the cottonwood trees. May our gathering together help us experience your limitless and transformational love. Amen. And now, Nicole. (laughs) All right, I I decided that I'm going to have lunch here today. So I've brought all the stuff I'll need with me. All right, Uh, before before I eat though, I thought I would um, give you a few clues about about what I'm having today. So, uh, (laughs) <laughs> all right, all right. A sp- yeah. Mm. <laughs> so two pieces of bread and butter. Uh, okay, what am I probably making? You, you, most of you have said it. A butter sandwich. Um, <laughs> I could put the butter on the inside of the bread or on the outside. Oh wait a minute, I forgot another ingredient. Oh yeah. Uh Uh-huh. All right, so I could be making a cheese sandwich. Oh, all right, there's one more thing I need. 
<laughs> All right, what could I make with a frying pan and cheese sandwich ingredients? Imagining if I had a stove, a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> All right, when we make something that has more than one ingredient, how many did I have? Butter, bread, and cheese. It's called a recipe. And every time I showed you one more of those things, you were able to guess what it was that I was making for lunch. In just a few minutes, Elaine, I think, is our scripture reader. Elaine will share the gospel story today from, from Luke. And a similar thing to my sandwich recipe will happen. Jesus surprises uh, his friends, the disciples, who have uh, some really tricky stuff to uh, accept and understand since Easter and Jesus' return. Now he is with them again, and he helps remind them of who he is. They share a meal together, uh, as we'll hear. It's not a grilled cheese sandwich, but um, then Jesus shares more and more stories about his life he shares them with his friends and helps them to understand why he has come back to them. After their meal and story time, Jesus tells them, now that you have heard my stories, you can go and tell others. So remember how you needed to see all my ingredients before you could guess that I was making a grilled cheese sandwich. Well, Jesus has to do the same thing with his friends. He has to help them to see him. He has to hear, they, or they have to hear his stories before they can fit the pieces together and go out and share those stories with others. Guess what? It worked. And the disciples went out and shared with people around them what they had learned and seen with Jesus, which is the reason that 2,000 years later, we're still telling those stories and talking to each other about the important things that Jesus taught us. Join me now in an echo prayer. Loving God, thank you for the disciples. Thank you for the disciples. Who spent time with Jesus. Who spent time with Jesus. And shared everything they saw and learned and shared everything they saw and learned. Help us to do the same. Help us to do the same. Amen. Amen. And now we will join together and sing number 157 in the Coil Bound More Voices, I Am a Child of God. child of God. I am a glimpse of God's new creation. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am an endless prayer. I am a yearning for contemplation. I am an I am an angry voice. I am an angry voice. I am a cry for peace. I am commitment and dedication. I am a cry for peace. I am a cry for peace. I am a song of joy. I am the moment of jubilation I am a song of joy I am a song of joy And now we have Elaine Henderson who is our scripture reader for today as Nicole packs up her picnic. <laughs> <laughs> our responsive reading this morning is Psalm 4, and it can be found on 
page 727 in Voices United. And on your screens at home, hi Jane, and in the main uh, screen in the sanctuary here. I will read the background and then Robin will introduce the refrain. We sing the refrain wherever there is an R symbol. The background. Those who lament to God do so with an underlying faith that God cares enough to listen. There is also an underlying faith that if God cares, people can call on God. Psalm 4 is such a lament. The psalm writer believes that God will hear the plea for deliverance. On this spring day, we lament the state of our environment, trusting that God gives us the strength and energy to make changes in our world. of reading. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause, for you set me free when I was in despair, or distress, story. Be gracious to me now, and hear my prayer. In the night I will take my rest, you alone keep my life secure. How long, you people, will you defame my soul, my honor? How long will you love what is worthless and seek lies? Know this, that God has chosen the faithful. God hears me when I call. Stand in awe and cease from sin. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices that are appointed. And put your trust in God. In the night I can take my rest. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see prosperity. Lift up the light of your face on us, O oh God. But you have put gladness in my heart, more than those whose grain and wine are plentiful. Safe and sound, I lie down and sleep. For you alone, God, make me dwell in safety. In the night I can take my rest, you alone keep my life secure. And the gospel reading this morning is from Luke chapter 24, verses 36b to 48. The background. The resurrection appearance of Jesus took place on the evening of Easter day. Jesus appeared to his friends and they were terrified because they thought they were seeing a ghost. But to show them he was not a ghost, Jesus showed them his hands, his feet, and his side, his wounds, and asked for something to eat. We are told that Jesus blessed them with peace and opened their minds. This passage is very similar to the John story we heard last week, the story of Thomas. We too can have our minds opened and our prejudices challenged by God's radical gift of love shown in the resurrection. The reading. Jesus stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. In their panic and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, why are you disturbed? Why do such ideas cross your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, really. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones as I do. After saying this, Jesus showed them the wounds. They were still incredulous for sheer joy and wonder. So Jesus said to them, do you have anything here to eat? After being given a piece of cooked fish, the Savior ate in their presence. Then Jesus said to them, remember the words I spoke when I was still with you. Everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms had to be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds to the understanding of the scriptures, saying, 
This is why the scriptures say that the Messiah must suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. In the Messiah's name, repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all this. Christ, the gift of eternal spring. Thanks be to God. left my office desk and computer, hiked up the hill to um, visit Marg Stacy's place because my friend Liz was visiting. So I was greeted by Phoebe, who's four years old, and I learned that she loves answering the door. Now we were in the kitchen, I was being served some tea, and Phoebe was certain there was another knock at the door. I went to the door and nobody was there, so it must have been a ghost, is what Phoebe, who's four and knows more about these things than I do. <laughs> so then Phoebe proceeded to tell us that if we wanted to see the ghost, we were going to have to use our five senses. We went through them, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching. And I also want to draw your attention to, I told the decor team that I was using the five senses, so you can see the five senses in our decor this morning, of all those five senses. Because those five senses that Phoebe, who's four, knew, that's how we interact with the world. That's how we tell what things are. We're human beings, and that's how we come to experience the world, is through our body, through our senses. Now, this seems pretty self-evident to us, and yet all of us can find ourselves getting bogged down in our thoughts, our thinking and interpretation of the world, rather than connecting with our direct experience through our senses. Sometimes we act like James Joyce's character, Mr. Duffy, who is described as, he lived a short distance from his body. <laughs> Sometimes we act as though it's our thoughts that are of the utmost important, and our body is just this contraption of organs and skin and bones used to carry our mind around. But that is not how Jesus saw it. And our corporality, physicality, our embodied being is emphasized again and again in the scriptures. The Jesus described by the Gospels, and especially in Luke's writing, is a fully human Jesus, which is to say, fully embodied. A human being who gets hungry and tired, who eats and drinks, who asks what's for dinner, who touches and is touched, who has hands and feet, who goes fishing, you're really gonna need a body if you're gonna haul in all those fish, there's that one story of the time that Jesus overturned the tables of the moneylenders in the temple, and it gets a lot of attention, but really, for the most part, Jesus is sitting at tables eating, eating with people, eating with friends, family, strangers, people who disagree with him, making breakfast for his friends who just got back from a fishing trip. Jesus is all about eating and sharing food together, and we all know what that's like passing the plates, pouring water or wine for each other, spilling, mopping up with sauce, with bread, sometimes people talking over each other, wondering what's going to be for dessert. Eating is one way that we care for ourselves and each other. We see this in the Bible. We see it in our church community. We have potlucks, a finger potluck next week, finger food potluck next week, pancake suppers, we have teas. We feed each other. We need spiritual nourishment in our hymns and prayers and worship, and we need physical nourishment. 
Last Sunday, I found myself standing beside Marianne and we were buttering up one of those still warm biscuits to go with a cup of tea. And Marianne said, ah, oh, this is exactly what I needed. I think we all know what that means. We all have experienced that because we know our minds, our bodies, and spirits are inextricably linked and connected. And there's plenty of research on this, and I sort of went down a bit of a rabbit hole, but just one simple one I'll share with you is a, a study where research participants were asked to remember either a time of social acceptance or rejection. And those with those warm memories of acceptance perceived the room temperature as being warmer than those who were asked to recall those experiences as of social snubbing or when they were treated coldly. Because our bodies respond to our thinking, our thoughts inform our physical experience. And in the Gospel of Luke that Elaine read for us today, we meet Jesus in one of those times that he shows up for the disciples after his death, after the tomb. And seeing this very alive Jesus after being there for his death just simply does not make any sense to his disciples. To think of him as a spirit or ghost is the best their brains can do to process this mystery. And what does Jesus do then? Well, he does not launch into quoting scripture or explaining the mechanics of resurrection. There's nowhere in the Bible explains the how-to of resurrection. But he shows us and shows them his hands and feet. He says, touch me and see. It's like saying, don't take my word for it. See and feel for yourself. And then when they're still stuck in this muddle of wonder and disbelief and joy, he asks to be fed. Because ghosts don't eat, human beings do. But about to that bit about see for yourself, Jesus is asking us to use our own hands and eyes to open our senses. It reminds me of a quote that often gets attributed to the Buddha, which is, just as a goldsmith tests his gold by burning, cutting, and rubbing it, so you must examine my words and accept them, but not merely out of reverence for me. And I think Jesus would connect with this saying, although I'm sure he'd say it differently, probably swapping in a fishing metaphor. Yes, of course, he wants us to accept what he's teaching and listen, but not because I said so or appealing to authority, but by testing it out for ourselves, putting our hands on the wounds of the world, feeling the pain, and smelling the lilacs when they start blossoming again after a long winter. Jesus is a teacher, and he wants us to know the good news of God's love, but not as a concept or idea, but to know it fully in our bodies. We aren't called to memorize or theorize about the good news, but to embody the good news. The resurrection isn't supposed to be relegated to an interesting concept or a notion or a challenging theology. It becomes good news when it becomes flesh and sinew, hand and foot. So how do we do that? How do we embody the good news that Jesus taught and lived? We embody that good news when we listen deeply to one another, and especially honoring stories that are different from our own. We embody that good news when we make space at the table for another and making sure that they have food on their plates. We embody that good news when we stand beside those who are suffering and grieve with those who are grieving. We embody the good news when we offer care, kindness, and compassion, both to our family and friends, our opponents and enemies, but also to ourselves, especially to ourselves and our own bodies. What would be a kindness that you can offer yourself today? A stretch, a good meal, a nap, smelling some fresh flowers. I suggest the hyacinth that Leah's bought, that brought that's on the, the altar today. But to end the story I started at the start, Phoebe and Liz and I did not actually find the ghost who knocked on Marg Stacy's door. But we did enjoy tea and cookies and laughter and going outside in bare feet on fresh grass 
and hugs, all things that nourished my body and my spirit, that made me feel more alive and loved. May each of us embody the good news of God's love and give and receive it to our bodies, minds, and souls. And let us sing together uh, more voices, number 153, Body, Mind, and Spirit. And you'll find the lyrics in the coil bound more voices or up on the screen. As we sit comfortably, let us focus our hearts and minds in preparation for prayer. When you hear the words, renewing and energizing Creator God, please respond with hear our prayers. Loving God, today and all days, we celebrate our earthly home with all its soul-restoring qualities, our gift from you, O Creator God. We celebrate each day that brings sun or rain, we welcome the return of bird symphonies and applaud the crows as they congregate to plan their days. <clears throat> we marvel at how our gardens are springing to life once again after a long winter's rest. Help us to be stewards of your earth, dear God, respecting and appreciating all that we have been given. Renewing and energizing Creator God, hear our prayers. Peace-loving God, be a source of strength for our Bienestar partners in Guatemala, for our brothers and sisters at Nyanazi Methodist Church in Zimbabwe, and for all those who have been adversely affected by COVID-19, whether in body, mind, or spirit. Here are prayers for the Church Universal, for this congregation, and for our ministry search team, for our nation and its leaders. <coughs> In our regional council prayer cycle this week, we ask for your blessing on the congregation and spiritual leaders of Vancouver Japanese pastoral charge. In the World Council of Churches prayer cycle, we pray for Belarus, Moldova, Russia, and Ukraine. In our heartfelt prayers, we pray for an end to their conflict, and we support with love the people who continue to suffer great losses and hardship. Renewing and energizing Creator God, hear our prayers. 
Shepherding God, we lay before you our concerns for all those who are ill or in pain, those who grieve, those who feel lonely, desolate, or unloved, those who are oppressed and endangered. In our prayers today, we especially remember Shelby, RJ and family, Jennifer, Casey, Esther, Dennis, Catherine, Carolyn, Hava, Carrie, Brian and family, Oksana and family, Susan, Leah and family, Meg, Barb, Gail, Brad, Anne, Deva, Carla, Jenny, Chris, Kent, Diane and Erica, Pamela, Elizabeth, Cynthia, Liam, Laura, Jane, Jack, Kathy, Naomi, and the people of the Valhalla Apartments. We pause to name either silently or aloud all those for whom we feel concern. Renewing and energizing Creator God, hear our prayers. God of harmony, bless all those who work for a peaceful and safe world, peacemakers, peacekeepers and their families, firefighters, police officers, doctors and nurses, teachers, rescue workers, and all those who willingly give their time and often their lives to assist others in need. We pray for two-spirit LGBTQIA people who continue to be disrespected and persecuted in many parts of the world. And we pray for peace, peace for Ukraine, peace for the people of Belarus and Russia who are grieving their country's aggression toward Ukraine. We pray for a peace that will last between Israel and Palestine and an end to the aggressive and devastating war in the Middle East. We pray for peace for the people in all areas of the world where there is violence and conflict. Peace for a world where there is war, civil unrest, gun violence, and racial discrimination. Renewing and energizing Creator God, hear our prayers. And with a blessing from Jan Richardson, an ordained minister of the United Methodist Church. May you have the wisdom to know the story to which God calls you, the power to pursue it, the courage to abide its mysteries, and love in every step. And the people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Leah. In the spirit of spring and the gift of resurrection, we share the bounty of our lives. We offer love and compassion in how we live and how we choose to share our resources. Through the gifts of our offering, we keep this community of faith operating and sharing our life-giving message of hope and healing. We also share with partners around the world through Mission and Service Fund. And let us pray. God of resurrection, who brought Jesus to life and who blesses us with a spring that is eternal, hear our thanksgiving. Thank you for the gifts you give us and the spirit that enables us to share our gifts in the world you have made. In the power of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. And as Jesus taught us, let us boldly say together, O birther, father, mother of the cosmos, focus your light within us, make it useful, create your reign of unity now. Your one desire then acts with ours, as in all light, so in all forms. Grant what we need each day in bread and insight, Loose the cords of mistakes finding us as we release the strands we hold of others' guilt. Don't let surface things delude us, but free us from what holds us back. From you is born all ruling will, the power and the life to do, 
the song that beautifies all from age to age it renews truly power to these statements may they be the ground from which all my actions grow amen and we will sing together now uh, more voices number 200 you are my body love like bright sunshine we thank you God for the color of bright green after so much brown and gray we thank you God for rain that brings mud and mud puddles we thank you God for asparagus arugula radishes and other first tastes of spring we thank you God for Jesus who teaches us to care for our bodies and care for each other we thank, thank you, God. God. May we be nourished in mind, body, and spirit by our time here together, and may we go forth experiencing and sharing God's spacious, all-inclusive, transformational love. Amen. Amen. And we sing. We sure do. <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> 